Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I am selfishly really only doing it for myself. Not a soul asked for this video, but I just had to know. For today's video, I picked up some products from the Kylie Cosmetics rebrands and I just want to compare it to the already existing products that I had in my collection. I call myself a product knowledge enthusiast for a reason. I just, I'm nosy. I need to know, okay? So, if you want to see all of that, then just keep watching. If you didn't know, Kylie Cosmetics did a huge rebrand. All of her formulations are new, her packaging is new, her website is new, and there are reasons behind that. I don't want to say anything incorrect, so I'm going to encourage you to do your own research if you are curious. All I know is that we got some new formulations and I want to see if they're different than before. Now, I didn't buy a lot of color dupes. If you look on her website, she launched colors that already existed previously. There's just new formulations and new packaging. I didn't want to purchase what I already had. I have a blush that I bought in the same color and a liquid lipstick just to see. But for the most part, I did buy new colors. And I did actually recently just declutter a lot of my old Kylie Cosmetics stuff. But when Kylie Cosmetics came out, I fell for the trap. I was really, really into it. I was in college. My peers were also into her liquid lipsticks and her cosmetic line. Over time, I lost interest as I think most people did. But I have a lot of the core products. I bought the products and formulations that I already had to see how they compared. What I didn't pick up from her website were the eyeliner and the brow products, but I have the blush, I have the highlighter, I have the bronzer, I bought a lip kit and a lip gloss. So that's the majority of what's on the site right now. So she didn't launch everything that she had already come out with, especially the collections, and there's no eyeshadow palettes either. But I mean, there still is a good number of stuff that she launched. So we're gonna start off with complexion, and we're gonna do the bronzer. If you are curious, this is what the box looks like. Looks like that it came in it has pink bubble wrap and here is the new bronzer so I got mine in the shade khaki now I have the old bronzer I have it in tequila tan here's what the packaging looks like so these are $18 and I looked up the prices the prices do seem to be the same that they were before she rebranded so that is great so I actually have a bronzer from the previous launch I do have it in a different color though so these colors colors are different. There was no reason I felt like for me to get a repeat, but let's take a look at the packaging here. So here's the packaging of the new rebranded product. It's very similar to like an Ofra packaging, just a little bit smaller. And here is the old product. You can see the color is pretty much the same. Packaging is quite different. Now, what was important according to the videos that I watched were that these products were vegan and I'm imagining they're also cruelty-free. I'm not an expert on cruelty-free, but if it's vegan, shouldn't it be cruelty free? Anyway, <laughs> somebody answer that in the comments down below because I know some of you guys know a lot better than me. And what's interesting, as you know, Seed Beauty, which is ColourPop's labs and company basically, made Kylie Cosmetics products. So all of the products from before the rebrand were made in the USA. This new bronzer is made in Italy and it has a twice as long shelf life. So the old product is 12 months shelf life made in USA. The new bronzer is a 24 month shelf life made in Italy. Now I know a lot of you guys hated this bronzer. You let me know. I personally never had an issue with it. I really liked it as you can see. Now what's different when you open up this now is the drips are no longer on the pan. It's just a little overlay that you're gonna throw away. It also has a mirror and again, these are two different colors. This is tequila tan and then the new one that I got is khaki. Tequila tan looks a little bit warmer, but they kind of look really similar. <laughs> Let me swatch the new one. This feels very, very creamy has a little bit of pinkiness to it. It's probably not as deep by swatch as I thought. It's definitely creamier and more wet feeling than the old formulation. Those are the differences in colors. So this is khaki, the reformulation, and this is the old tequila tan. The reformulation definitely feels like it has a lot more moisture to it. Since we're gonna start applying, hair is back, and we are zoomed in for the rest of the video. So I'm actually going to apply 
apply the old formulation first on this side of my face. I'm using a Refer Number 5 brush. The brush looks dirty. I did spot clean it before this video, so there is no product on it. It's not a clean brush, but it's not a dirty brush either, okay? And you see, I never had a problem with the old Kylie bronzer formula. In fact, <laughs> I actually quite liked it. So that's Tequila Tan. Let's see how it's different from the new formulation. Obviously, the color is going to be different, but that's my bad. So I'm wiping off my brush. So this has more powder kick up immediately with the old formulation. You could do this in the product. However, it does get hard pan. If you look closely in my old formulation, there's hard pan in it. This does not look like it's prone to hard pan. It's just creamier, it's more powdery. I think this is going on a little bit easier. And yes, tequila tan is a different color. Khaki has a little bit more neutralness to it. I do think that this is a step up in formula. I think if you did not like the old formulation, you will like this new formulation. It's creamier, it blends out easier, and it's not gonna get hard pan. I think you're able to get more pickup because it's not so pressed hard. It's definitely pressed a lot softer. So the new formulation is an improvement. By the way, inside the box, I'm just noticing there's cute lips. So the bronzer, I'm giving it a thumbs up. I still liked the old formulation, but I am really into this new formulation. It's definitely better. So awesome. Blushes. I picked up two of the blushes. They are in the same box packaging. These are also vegan, made in Italy, and have a 24-month shelf life. Now, I loved the old formulation of blushes. I loved her colors. I have like six of them here. These are all the exact same packaging as the bronzers. Everything from the old formulation to the new formulation. These guys, like I said, are made in USA and also have a 12 month shelf life. So twice as long as a shelf life now. Made in Italy. So I picked up two shades. Let me show you. I did want to pick up one shade that I already had. So here we have Pink Power. Again, it has the drip overlay. This feels feels just like the bronzer. So this is Pink Power. It's a light baby pink. I did pick up a new shade that I didn't have because I was curious. So this is Winter Kissed. So you know what I just realized? I went so warm with my eye look today to go with my shirt and the lip products and the cheek colors I got are not going to go with the eyes. <laughs> That's okay. It is what it is. But Winter Kissed has a little bit more blue to it. Winter Kissed and Pink Power makes Pink Power look a lot more peachy, actually. And here's the swatches. Pink Power, Winter Kissed. They are very, very close. I do actually have the old Pink Power and they look different. Here is the old pink power you guys and then the new pink power looks so much more peach If anything pink power looks more like winter kissed Again, I didn't buy too many of the same color that I already own, but they might be a little bit different. It does look like they tweaked the colors. Now, the blushes definitely feel more creamy than the original bronzers, but just so you can see the swatches. This is the old pink power. This is the new pink power. New blush formulation does feel like it has a little bit more, not moistness, but it feels thicker. It feels creamier, whereas this feels like a bit of a lighter weight powder. So the new one definitely feels a little bit more heavy formulation wise. The old one feels a little bit more lightweight and like I said I really love the old formulation. I'm using a blinged brush F14. You see? What is not to like about the old blush formulation? I think she had a really beautiful one. As you can see there's no sheen to it. It's a matte blush. Really beautiful. It does not go with my eye look but really beautiful. I'm gonna use pink power even though it's more peachy. Wiped off my brush. Again you get more kickback with this new formulation so and I definitely got more pigment from the old formulation. Very interesting. Like I'm going back in more. They definitely look a lot more similar on the cheeks now. But I think this one might be blending a bit better. For these two formulations, I will say it's harder to tell the difference, especially with application. I actually think the old formulation is a little bit quicker to apply. I got more pigmentation right away. I think it blended out quickly. However, that's me literally looking for a difference. These are definitely a lot closer in formulation 
than the bronzers. And it's just interesting that I got the same color, but they were different. So it's something to keep in mind, food for thought. Now that I've worn that blush for a day, something that I also did notice is that the new formulation, it is a bit more blurring. So the way that they sit on the skin, it's basically imperceptible, but I was like up to a mirror like this. But the way that they sit on the skin, it does look like the new formulation was a tad, a tad more blurring. Let's keep it moving now. In reality, I would say they're they're pretty much the same. So same good quality. I really liked the blushes before. I still like the blushes now. I did buy a highlighter. Now here's the thing. I did have a highlighter before, but I actually just recently decluttered it because I hated it. It was a terrible formulation. It was in the shade Queen Drip. And I don't know if it was just that color, but that left a sour taste in my mouth for the rest of the highlighters. And I don't even have it anymore, and I'm not mad about it, honestly. So I did buy a new one to see if I like it better. This has an 18 month shelf life made in Italy. I got the shade Salted Caramel. I don't know what I was thinking. I think this is gonna be too deep for me, but it has the Kylie embossment. It's a very, very gold shade. At least it's gonna go with my eyes, but I think if you have a medium to deep skin tone, you'll like this a lot better. That being said though, this, for me, it's gonna be very, very easy to beat the old formulation. I don't think I should have much trouble with it. Let me do a swatch for you. Let's see. It has kind of like a baked gelée kind of formula. Nothing crazy. Unimpressive based on swatch, but let's see. This is a Kaleidos H1 brush, so this one's not giving me really any fallout. It's like a baked gelée formula. It's pretty. It's soft. For some reason, I thought it was going to be more blinding. Again, I've had a bad experience with her highlighter in the past. This is way better. It looks good, but I don't think it's the end-all be-all highlighter. By the way, these are kind of expensive for highlighters. The bronzer only being $18. These are $24. I seem more expensive. I don't think they're all that. Definitely nicer than the old formulation comparing to what I've had, though. And this shade's a little bit more soft. It's not too deep on me, by the way. It's cute. She's nice. I think you can get nicer highlights for $24 though, but it's definitely an improvement in formulation, that's for sure. Hmm. I like it, I'm not mad about this. I don't feel the need to declutter this. I get to clutter the other one. I picked up some new lip products, the OG of Kylie Cosmetics. I of course had to pick up some lip kits. This was the very first product Kylie came out with. Each lip kit is going to cost $29. I don't think that's that bad for a lip liner and a liquid lipstick. Taking a look online, it looks like there's a few shades sold out, but not too many. One thing I have to say that I was excited about for this rebrand is I really did like Kylie's liquid lipstick colors. The formulation I always thought was extremely drying and it would be good on that first application but to touch up or add a second layer that's when it went all downhill. That second coat would dry up my lips, make them crunchy, they would flake off. So I thought her liquid lipstick formula was very drying. It did not do well at all with a second application or for a touch up, but I loved, loved, loved her colors. I feel like the colors that she chooses for her line, stunning. So there's a lot of staple colors that I still have, even though I don't like the formulation because I love the colors. And it is a lot of nostalgia for me. I just remember going crazy for these in college and my roommates and I would be like, what color are you wearing? Oh, I'm wearing exposed. <laughs> so I got one of my favorite colors, Candy K. I'm going to compare it to my Candy K old formulation. And I also got a new color to play with. This is Kylie. I thought it looked interesting. But I actually did recently declutter a lot of my Kylie liquid lipsticks. With it being a lip product, they needed to be decluttered. So this is what the box looks like. These guys, it looks like they have an 18-month shelf life. The liquid lipstick made in the USA just like the old liquid lipstick and the lip liner is made in Italy so the packaging is really really cute pink I guess everything is now pink as you can see with the old one it was black and as with the lip liner but we still have the drip going down the side it looks like it's a little bit less drippy though <laughs> if we're getting really specific here with the Kylie on the cap now one thing that I really hated that I'm looking out for with the new formulation was the packaging of the old lip liners good formula very creamy but I found that they broke all the time the lip liner part would fall out or 
fall into the actual component. I don't think this one is broken, but you can see this one is not in its place and just weird things would happen with these lip liners. So I'm curious to see if the new lip liners don't have that. Now I actually do not have a Candy K lip liner, which is crazy. I thought I did. I might use Dulce K. So let me put on the old one. You see, this is what I'm talking about, this old one. And the colors are gonna be different and mismatched. <laughs> it is what it is. This is the old Dulce K formula though. Very smooth. Okay, let's try out Candy K. So here's what the Candy K lip liner looks like. It's very, very smooth. Okay, so these actually apply thinner and more slick onto the lips. It's a little bit less drag as you line the lips, which actually makes the application a lot more simple. Not that these weren't creamy. These are creamy to begin with, but they just got a little bit creamier. And it feels like the lip liner is really in there. It feels more stable, but that's really something only time can tell. Okay, we're gonna do the liquid lipstick now. The new formulation does have a very slight vanilla scent, but it's very, very slight. Here is what the swatch of that Candy K liquid lipstick looks like. But let's do the true test. This is what I'm excited for. Let's see if the old formulation of Candy K is the same color. Okay, so these are a lot closer than the blushes. You can see the old one maybe has a touch more pink, but for the most part, I think they would look close on the lips. But there is that slight, like, there, there seems to be a little bit of a pigment change. Like the incy bintiest little bit of a different pigment or more of a certain pigment was added. So let's do the old formulation. I left my lips kind of dry just to really test out the formula. Here's the old drying formula right here. But like I said, the first layer normally isn't too bad. It's so when you add that second layer that it's not cute and it's flaky. So the new formulation feels a little bit more souffle-like. It's still a liquid lipstick, but there's something about it that's a bit softer. And look, you can see we got more butthole on the old formulation, whereas it looks softer and a little bit more blurring with the new formulation. Yeah, the, the new formulation definitely has a little bit more of that souffle feel to it. I'm gonna apply a second layer on this side to see if it gets really dry, like the old formulation would. Okay, so second layer of the old formula is on because this is when I really didn't like the old formulation. By the way, let's take a look at the doe foots while we're here. The new formulation has a bigger doe foot. I actually like how small the old formulation's doe foot was though, but these are all very, very minor, minor differences. Ew. You see this? With the old side, you see how it's picking up out here? Definitely an improvement with the new formulation. What I'm actually going to do is I'm gonna take off my lip altogether. I want to start fresh with the new formulation just to see how it feels and I'll also try on the new color while I'm at it. So I think it might be easier to tell the real difference once I get this off and put it all over the lips. Okay, so I swatched the Kylie shade for you. It's a little bit more brown and then definitely pulls more mauvey pink. Let's apply it. I just feel like I can get a better feel for the formulation if I put it all over my lips because I am just, I'm so familiar with the old formulation, I don't even need to do a side by side. And this feels stable, so that's good. I barely have to put any pressure at all to get this lip liner to line. That's crazy. So the lip liner in this set is a little bit more brown than the actual lip good lipstick, which I appreciate because I feel like I prefer something more contoury like this. So what's very interesting with this specific kit is the lip liner is much more brown than the actual liquid lipstick, but I prefer that because that's kind of like a more realistic way to contour the lips. So I like that they're different, but they still do blend together very well. All right, y'all, I mean, a liquid lipstick is a liquid lipstick. It's always gonna feel drying on me. I'm just not the biggest fan of liquid lipsticks in general, but I definitely feel like the formula has improved. Overall, it just looks a lot less drying on the lips. But let's go ahead and add some moisture because I picked up a high gloss. Now, I picked up the shade So Cute, and fun fact, I bought the very first So Cute. It came in this packaging. It was a lip gloss. She changed her lip gloss formulation to the high gloss formulation. I do have the high gloss formulation. I no longer have the shade So Cute. Let's see if they're different at all. So the high glosses are going to be $16, and here's the comparison 
comparison between the old packaging and the new packaging. So we have that added drip here. Both products are made in the USA, but the old one has a 12 month shelf life. The new one has 18. So these products last longer, which gives it, you know, a better value, honestly, in my opinion. Oh, so cute, look at that. Let me show you actually, sorry. So these do have a good amount of pigment. It's that very top swatch here. So cute is the perfect nude gloss. Look how much pigment that has. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but TPH though, feels a bit sticky. I don't know if I like that. Let me put on the other eye gloss that I have. This is Diva. This is the old formulation. Oh, this kind of smells old. <laughs> I should probably throw this one away. Oh, I much prefer the old formulation. This new formulation feels sticky to me. Now the stickiness is gonna help with longevity, but I really like how much smoother the old one feels. I'm gonna throw this one away though because this is definitely expired. It tastes like crayons. Yeah, because this other one that I have, it smells good. This one does not. I'm gonna throw that away. But speaking on the formulations, I definitely prefer the older formula. The new high gloss formula feels a bit sticky, but now I have a gross taste on my mouth. <laughs> I can't deal with that. <laughs> All right, let me touch up my lips and I'll be back to give you my final thoughts. All right, so taking a step back, I did end up putting the new high gloss all over my lips and I have to say, it feels a lot better all over the lips, but it is definitely more sticky than the old high gloss formula. What was great about the high gloss formula was it was not sticky at all, making it a little bit more hydrating. However, I really do believe that this is more sticky to help with longevity, so it's gonna last longer on the lips. But do keep in mind, it, it is stickier than the old formula, but it's not uncomfortably sticky. It's definitely tolerable, and if it helps with longevity, I'm not mad at it anymore. Overall, I feel like there was an improvement in most of the formulations, particularly the bronzer is what I think you guys are gonna see the most improvement on. The blushes for me were kind of <laughs> the same to me. I really liked the blush formulation before. I still like the new blush formulation now. Highlighters are a big improvement in my opinion. The liquid lipsticks and the lip liners, big improvement, particularly the lip kits, definitely a huge improvement. So far, I think I like the lip liners a lot more and the liquid lipsticks do seem to be more hydrating and less flaky than the old formulation. The only kind of disappointment to me was the high gloss formula. I don't think it's as good as the original but I do think that for the most part there is an improvement in the formulations. It's a bit odd but if you are going to purchase repeat colors they are slightly different so don't expect them to be exactly the same. Obviously I can't speak on everything but from the two products that I bought that I did already own slight differences in the colors nothing I would say too noticeable but it's not gonna be 100% on the dot I'm very happy with this rebrand I think there was a positive direction taken and I mean I don't know if I'm going to continue to purchase every collection that she comes out with this video was purely for scientific purposes but let me know if you're interested in me continuing to see what's up with the brand I definitely am interested in picking up an eyeshadow palette when she comes out with those to see what I think. But yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about this. I think you guys will like the new formulas. So that's all I have for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.